bit of news and a little bit of transfer gossip and some some theft, some skullduggery, some um, investigation needed. Let's get straight to the investigation. Um, Jesse Lingard had his watch stolen. Should I say allegedly? I should I say allegedly? I'll say allegedly. Allegedly had his watch stolen. I think he had his watch stolen. Um, and it was for, he was left it in the dressing room. So when he went out to play a game, came back, the watch had gone. Now, I don't know about you, but my watch, I don't even wear my watch, to be fair, my watch costs 40 quid, right? I don't know how much a millionaire's watch costs, or a footballer's watch, I say a millionaire or a footballer, they're basically the same things, but I'd imagine it's more than 40 quid. Um, you wouldn't steal my watch. You, if, you, if you went into my locker, I don't have a locker room, but if I played football, you saw my watch, you wouldn't steal it, you'd probably put 40 quid in there and, and leave a note saying, get yourself a better watch, mate. But Lingard's watch, I'm imagining, is worth, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand. It's a lot of money. But there's form for this at West Ham. Reese Oxford had his watch stolen. Do you remember the story? I was just speaking to Gio and he reminded me of it. And then I was thinking the other one with Andy Carroll. But Andy Carroll didn't have his watch stolen. I see, I'm laughing. It's not funny if it's your watch. Um, someone tried to steal Andy Carroll's watch. So there clearly is some watch theft going on at West Ham. It's a bit... I, th I think it's a little bit like pens in my house. You, you buy a pen, it gets stolen. Just non-stop. I actually stash them in here. It's alright, the kids don't watch these videos. Boy, they're sick of me speaking enough as it is. They don't tune in and watch my videos. So I've stashed the pens in here. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but I just don't think this is good, really. Not for anyone that wants to keep a watch. If I had a watch and I played for West Ham, I would, I would go in. I, I wouldn't take my watch, I just wouldn't wear one. Um, there needs to be an investigation. Somebody has stolen a witch. Basically, there needs to be an investigation, um, I guess. I don't know, but I don't think it helps in us signing him because I mean, he's going to be looking around thinking, look, someone's nicked my watch. You know, who is it? I mean, I don't know. It's anyway, is it a story? It is a story, but it keeps happening. Anyway, um, transfers, transfers. Right. OK, West and West Ham are in talks. It's not really a transfer, is it? Director of football probably is a transfer. We're looking for a director of football. Um, the, the suggested name is Robbie Cook, and he worked with Moyes at Everton, Man United, and Preston. Um, I, I think we might be making a little bit of an error here, though, which is Moyes selects the director of football. Well, we've been here before, haven't we? Because Pellegrini, didn't he, <laughs> select the director of football? I think it's important the board select the director. I know I said the other day that I want Moyes to have control, and I, and I do. Um, didn't, in fact, didn't Moyes appoint Tony Henry? I think he did. I think he did. Um, I'm not saying Tony Henry was no good at bringing in players, but it didn't, act, it didn't work out particularly well. Big fan of Moyes, you know this. Done lots of I Love Moyes videos. Well, I didn't title them that. Maybe the next one I will. I Love David Moyes. Um, but anyway, I, I think that's, that's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, Balbuena's off. He's not out of date, or well, he is really, technically. I mean, that means he's got his best before date. He's not, he doesn't smell or anything like that when I say he's off. Um, but he is leaving West Ham, as we know. His contract has expired. Um, now, this is something that made me interesting. It said, as revealed by this site, I'm on One Football at the moment, but um, One Football have nicked it from Football Insider. Everybody nicks everything off everyone else. I don't even know why anyone credits anyone. Uh, it, it, there's an interesting phrase in here. It says, West Ham have prioritised the signing of a new top-class centre-back this summer. Have we? Have we? Who said that? Well, obviously, Football Insider said that. But, really? We've prioritised the signing of a new top-class centre-back? Hold on a second. If we've got... We're going with 60 million at the moment because it's... We just are. Oh, that's, that's my figure. I've made it up. But let's say 60 million. Hold on. We want the, the, the midfielder and the striker, right? We're not going to go out and spend 20, 30 million on a centre-half. We don't need to. Do we? I don't think so. Unless we're selling Diop or something like that. I, I wouldn't imagine we do. We have to replace Balbuena, for sure, but can't we do that with a load or a free or something like that? Interestingly, Ryan Bertrand is available on a free from Southampton. I, I saw it, it popped up on a ticker tape on um, Sky Sports News last night. Well, why? Well, this is a good signing, right? For free, this is a bit of a no-brainer. I think West Ham should be looking, should be all over that 
as a bit of midfield backup cover thingy. Not midfield, left wing backup cover thingy. Um, here's the, the big one. Here's the, the really big one, which I'm really... This is everywhere. There's a lot of sites reporting. This one's from Tribal Football. West Ham edge closer to signing Spartak Moscow midfielder Alex Crow. Now, I'm going to need the help of our, of our Czech fans and our Czech followers and subscribers who, who did help me out massively on the, on the Adam Hrosik video and the Simmer video. I need your help again. OK, please, if you'd be so kind. Alex Crow uh, obviously plays for Czech Republic. I believe he used to play... For Sparta Prague. I think so. But anyway, whatever. He, he knows Suchek and he knows Sufel. He's a midfielder. A very good midfielder, apparently. Um, and it's it's everywhere. How old is he? I think he's 23. That article doesn't say. Just bear with me a second. They're not in... No, no. Alex Crow. Alex Crow. There we go. Um... I mean, it's everywhere. The Express is running with it as well. He is 23 years of age. Apparently, we're already in talks. £14 million. Now, as I understand it, he's quite a, he's quite a dynamic midfielder. Um, you know, does everything pretty pretty well as far as I'm I'm aware. I think he, he takes up a lot of the time. So I think when they play in central midfield for the Czech Republic, I'm not saying this with any certainty at all, which is why I'm, I am encouraging people to correct me. But I think more or less he sits and Suchek goes, you know, scores the goals and this, this guy sits. But apparently there's a little bit more um, to his game. He's another high-energy player. And let's be fair, these Czech lads are coming in on their days off um, and working, doing additional training and stuff like that. Clearly there's a good work ethic to them. Clearly they, they've got a good attitude. And, I mean, they obviously all speak excellent English as well. It helps them set on it. That's great if they all... You know, if there's, if there's three of them and their families and it helps their family settle, I just think it's it's good news. Why, why not? Why not do it? And if this is a... He's obviously got to be a good player, which I'm, I'm assuming he is. I like this. I like this. Um, the other one that seems to be doing the rounds is Pereira of West Brom. Apparently, us and Aston Villa are in for him. Now, I, I like this player. We've discussed this player at length numerous times um, recently. Uh, he would obviously be the replacement for Lingard. The one thing we don't know, obviously, I like him, and a lot of you like him. We don't know if David Moyes likes him, OK? Also, I don't know. I would suggest there's possibly... Hopefully, there's money for Jesse Lingard, a midfielder and a striker, right? Um, and I'll get to that money in just a second, because there's another article. Um, if it's not Jesse Lingard, then I think Pereira's a really good shot. It looks really good, I think. We were the best at set pieces this season. I think we'd be, we'd take that to a, another level for next season as well. Um, linked again with Adam Armstrong, as you probably saw that link. And oh, I've got to try and pronounce this. A midfielder. Oh dear. Okay. Um, John Monacaola. We call him the Crayola. The cray I call him the crayon. John the crayon. The Crayola. Um, we've got to sign him, really. That's I, I like that. Um, where is he? Is is in um, Othathuna. 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 Is how you say it in Spanish, I believe. Probably like Numancia. Uh, Barcelona. Anyway, uh, sorry, I'm I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting silly now, aren't I? Right, let's just deal with this, though, because this is to do with West Ham's finances. Uh, and I think this is really... It says, basically, West Ham's turnover uh, is going to soar to £210 million. Last season, it was £190 million. Now, um, does that? A £20 million increase? Nothing spectacular about that? Well, there is. Because we haven't had any gate receipts. So, actually... Bear, to to not have any fans in the ground and to not... I don't know how much that's worth. 20, 30 million, maybe over a season. Maybe it's not as much as that. I don't know. Um, but to increase your turnover when you've lost a revenue stream is, is pretty impressive, really. So I think that can only be good. Look, yes, there was some loans. There were some rights issues and, and some extra shares made available and some, some investment from the owners to try and counter balance what we were losing so i guess there's money owed back uh well undoubtedly the, the owners are owed money back because they've given the club loans haven't they so and they certainly haven't they didn't take the i think they were meant to was it january before last they were meant to take 40 million they didn't do it did they um so that's still in there my point being 
that we shouldn't really, if that's the case, have a reduced transfer kitty. Uh, where is it? It's we've basically earned 30 million for finishing sixth, which is sort of offset the losses. Um, also, we had more televised games, and every time you get a game televised, you get a little bit more money. That's long and short of it. Previous the previous turnover was 191 million. Um, that, sorry, that was the previous record, not the previous turnover. I've got that wrong. Okay, so actually the turnover has gone up massively from the last year. The re previous record was for 2019. So it's now 210 million, which is our biggest ever turnover. An Apple turnover. Beautiful. So anyway, so this is this is good, right? We should be able to go out there. We should be able to afford money. Um, afford money? <laughs> How do you afford money? Excuse me, I've got some money. I'd like to buy some money, please. Yeah, you don't afford money. Um, I, I should just say, sorry, I didn't say... When the Jesse Lingard thing happened with the watch, the police had to be called. The police got called in. Um, so I think this is quite serious. So <laughs> I don't I don't know. So anyway, the £210 million turnover, we'll probably have to give Jesse sort of £10 million back for his watch. So it'd probably just be a, a, a small, paltry um, £200 million. But that doesn't mean it's £200 million for players. Things have got to be paid for. Wages have got to be paid Blah, 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 blah. All the other stuff's got to be paid. But I would like to think it gives us a a robust, a robust transfer kitty for the transfer. And I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rumours. I like all this stuff. Transfer rumours, lots of stuff going on, money to spend. I, I hope, we hope, fingers crossed. Um, looking forward to it. I'll catch up with you tomorrow.